Hello and welcome to State of the Union. I'm Stefan Grobe in Brussels. European Union countries acknowledged this week that they are well on their way to failing Ukraine when it comes to providing military support. Earlier this year, EU leaders promised to provide one million rounds of ammunition to Ukraine's front line by springtime next year in what would have amounted to a serious ramp-up of production. But the bloc is finding it tough to come up with the goods. At a meeting in Brussels, Germany's defense minister was brutally honest. The promise of a million rounds of ammunition was a pipe dream from the beginning, he said. So, is this embarrassing at best and a debacle at worst for the EU? Die Frage, ob eine Million jemals realistisch war, es wäre eigentlich die richtige. Es hat Stimmen gegeben, die gesagt haben, Vorsicht, eine Million ist leicht zu beschließen. Das Geld ist da, aber die Produktion muss da sein. Die mahnenden Stimmen haben jetzt leider recht. Wir haben mit unseren Rahmenverträgen einen großen Teil beigetragen und werden das auch weiter tun. Wir sind in Gesprächen mit der Rüstungsindustrie. Die Produktion muss hochgefahren und beschleunigt werden. Das ist das Gebot der Stunde. The other conflict that Europe is struggling to deal with these days is, of course, the war between Israel and Hamas. More than the war in Ukraine, this one has revealed deep divisions, not only between EU governments, but also within our societies. And a misplaced message of criticism can cost you dearly. This week, the Web Summit took place in Lisbon, one of the biggest tech events in the world, following the resignation of its CEO for suggesting, in a tweet, that Israel committed war crimes in Gaza. This prompted the boycott of the Web Summit by big names like Google, Meta, Siemens and Intel. The whole affair briefly distracted the conference from its top topic, artificial intelligence. A challenge for our societies that cannot be underestimated. I think that AI is going to be transformational in our lives. Uh, some of it is happening already and some of it is yet to come. From my perspective, how we use AI, how we govern AI, how we ensure that our humanity is at the forefront of AI and that it works to make our societies better is the most important imperative. For AI to make societies better and not do any major harm, the world is finally starting to regulate artificial intelligence. But what is really important? Joining me now is Victoria Espinel, CEO of BSA The Software Alliance, an industry group representing software companies in the United States. She also advises President Biden on AI as head of the National Artificial Intelligence Advisory Committee. Welcome to the program. Thank you. I'm so pleased to be here. So there are attempts underway in both the European Parliament and the U.S. Congress to regulate AI. What should be the major points in such a legislative framework? It is very, it's a very busy time for AI regulation, which is fantastic. And I would say to policymakers around the world, not just the United States and the EU, but around the world, focusing on the most significant risks that we are facing today, risks that can be addressed, I think is what policymakers should prioritize. I think there are great attempts happening in the United States and Europe and other places to have a risk-based approach that is flexible. And the last thing I would say is making sure that it is flexible enough that it will work for the long term because innovation is going to continue to move forward. And so we need regulation that will be future proof. Is the European approach different than the American? They are similar in some ways. I think both of them have taken an approach where they are focusing on risks, risks that can be addressed today. And I think that's positive. Of course, there are some differences. We have different legal systems. But in concept, I think there, is, there are a lot of similarities, which I think is very positive. And uh, I think the amount of policymaker focus right now means we have a real opportunity to have a globally coordinated approach. That opportunity won't last forever. So this is the moment for governments to be working together. 2024 will be a year with elections in some of the world's largest democracies, including the EU and the US. How concerned are you that AI will usher in a new era of political disinformation? That has already been happening. I think the concern is whether or not it will be exacerbated, whether it will be accelerated because some of the tools are there. I think the good news is that 
because there has been an issue before, it is something that tech companies, that the software companies are very focused on fixing and policymakers know that this is a real threat that needs to be addressed. So I think that level of focus, again, gives us a real opportunity to put rules in place that will address those risks. And, I, and I'm hoping that the elections, in a sense, are a catalyst for that movement. How should we defend ourselves as societies against bad actors in election campaigns? There are many parts of that answer, but I think one of them is to have the public have as much information as possible, including whether or not content that they're seeing, has it been generated by AI? Has it been manipulated by AI? And so one important step that I think industry and governments can take together is trying to make sure that the, that the general public understands as much as possible about the content that they're seeing. All right, Victoria Espinel, CEO of BSA, the Software Alliance. Thank you so much for speaking to us today. Appreciate it. Thank you so much for having me. Let's go back to the Web Summit. One of the stars of the tech conference was Desdemona, Daisy to her friends, a pop star robot powered by a large language model or LLM, created to explore the potential of AI in the entertainment industry. That means that, thanks to artificial intelligence, Daisy has been trained to mimic human writing by processing a large database of text. And on that, she was quite confident. Robots are amazing. We can do things that humans can't. So it's really cool to be able to explore the world with a different perspective. Plus, it's just fun to hang out with my robotic friends. Well, the future has certainly arrived. That's it for this edition. I'm Stefan Grober. Thank you for watching. Have an excellent week.